sixth Sunday of Easter reflection. My dear friends, we are in a journey towards Pentecost. First Sunday it was resurrection and divine mercy and then supremacy of Peter, Good Shepherd Sunday and last Sunday he asked us to love as he has loved us. So it's a farewell speech after the washing of the feet. And today the same speech is continued where the Lord is saying before he, before he was betrayed, before the passion. So last speech, farewell speech, he was quite bold my dear friends. The, the tone of Jesus is different. It's not a heartbroken, pale tone. It's an encouraging tone. That's exactly how, why the Lord is saying, I will give you peace. I will give you my peace, which is shalom, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, we find that gift. So it happens when you are connected. And that peace is never in flux. It won't change. It is untouchable. That shallow, which cannot be translated directly. That is, not, that is beyond peace. So it is, it is never changing as the tree roots to the stream. Seasonal changes, drought, famine, the tree is at least bothered about it because the root is connected. So that kind of connection gives you shalom. So Jesus, he knows that he's going to be killed, betrayed, crucified, and it's a brutal, bloody death. Yet he's strong because he's at peace. He knows that I'm, I'm here to do the will of the Father. So the gospel says, if anyone loves me and he will keep my word and my Father will love him. So exactly, he asks us to love as he loves us, as he loved us. And now he's saying, keep my word. If you want to love me, keep my word. This word is logos. Only, only John has used this word. Logos means Jesus himself. So if you read carefully, one John, uh, one, if you read carefully John's prologue at the very outset, the beginning of John's gospel, word, word was with the Lord, with, with, with God, word, the very word Logos is used there. And also in the, it starts in the beginning. And if you read the Genesis, in the beginning, word was there and word created. So this is Jesus. So if you keep my word means, you, you, you keep his commandments, you keep his words. And if you love me, you obey my word. And Jesus himself, that word is Jesus himself. My dear friends, it's a deep connection. So if you love me, love is a verb, it's not a noun. So if it is love, it should, it should flow. So love one another as I have loved you. So this is my commandment, he's saying. So if you want to experience, if, you, if you, anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. It's beautiful, isn't it? In Genesis 1.28, the Lord said, we will create man in our image and likeness. So that we, that's a Trinitarian presence. My dear friends, this is, the presence of God in the world, in the world we call Jehovah Shammah, is important. For Jews, that presence was important. That's exactly why he said to Samaritan woman, woman that you, there will be a time where you don't worship, worship in that mountain or Jerusalem. There will be a time where we worship in, in your spirit. So this is in John chapter 3 we find so that presence so earlier tabernacle was the presence of god there was a temple and holy of holies so written word god wrote the ten commandments decalogue into stony tablets so that was in the tabernacle so they believe the presence of god is there now that presence is different that we he's going to come to us we're going to worship him in spirit so we become the temple of God. We become the temples of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 speaks about the, ten, the, the temple of God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 
the very te very text speaks about the temple you are the your body is the temple of god the presence of god so exactly in the second reading my dear friends that's that's speaking about a temple and a new city jerusalem after all the persecution because it is written of persecuted church the spirit led john to see this vision a new city where the, the where the the city does not have walls the whole city is temple the presence is going to be there without any demarcation and that city for its temple i saw no temple in the city because the whole temple is whole city is a temple so we become temples of god and he said for it is it is temple its temple is the lord god the almighty and the lamb so that presence is different it's a heavenly presence so they strongly believe it's in a temple it's between few walls now that temple is different it happens with the holy spirit my dear friends when you when holy spirit is the connection between father and son and the same spirit will connect you to the trinitarian presence so that's exactly why uh, when jews uh, judas left only this speech is given whoever does not love me does not keep my word that's about jews and judas and all the people who will go against him and 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 these things i have spoken to you while i am still with you but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that i have said to you holy spirit the paraclete again that word cannot be translated he's a helper he's going to be with you illegally he is going to step on behalf of you speak on behalf of you that spirit is going to be with you and that presence is different my dear friends the lord is saying i will go to my father you will rejoice you will be joyful that i am going to my father because at 755 we find when so when Saul was when Stephen was stoned he saw heavens opening and jesus was seated at the right hand of god and he saw that presence so when jesus when when jesus went to the father he gave the promise of the holy spirit and exactly in mark 6:16 verse 19 to 20 we find how Jesus was ascended and seated at the right hand and the, he was powerfully present among the community that's exactly why Saul Saul when he, Saul was persecuted in the community lord asked why do you persecute me so i am present in the community it's beautiful isn't it so that's that's why you'll be glad because when i go you will have the holy spirit and he's going to accompany you be with you we find in the first reading my dear friends jerusalem council and council of jerusalem where the judaizers i mean the the jews who are who are baptized was stick to the mosaic law extremely and those judaizers wanted to circumcise uncircumcised christians so this is the argument with the argument how how barnabas and paul went to jerusalem and they were discussing and peter came up with another conclusion peter is the pope of rome and pope i'm sorry bishop of rome and bishop of Je jerusalem is james and james comes with this conclusion where we should write a letter and that letter is there and it is said beloved brothers beloved barnabas and paul who risk their lives are with you like good shepherds my dear friends and for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us see how the holy spirit accompanied them in their decision making council of jerusalem had a great a, a great decision in the church where holy spirit led each and every one that's what is going to happen in our lives when jesus gave that promise promise from above promise of the father that's our holy spirit so when he is there you will experience a presence trinitarian presence in you you'll be strong you will be in a new jerusalem you will experience the presence of god you become a ultra christus another christ who experiences a power and you will experience the presence jeva shamma in you so that's the invitation with the readings so have that power 
be in that power and execute that power in your life. Amen. May God bless you.